To begin, lay the princess cut on the crown to make certain it will fit. It should rest on top of the V-prongs, just barely touching the inside of the V. This stone measures 4.2 by 4.1 millimeters. I drew a line with a felt tip marker to designate the long direction. This will help in setting the stone the same direction each time I fit the stone. Begin filing across the top of the prongs to make sure they are level, and then file a little bit on the outside of the prongs to make sure they are parallel with each other. Next, set the dividers to where we want the girdle of the stone to set. I like to go around and mark this line all the way around the outside of the prongs, and then I go to the inside and scribe the same line to the same depth around the inside of all of the prongs. This will give me a line to cut the seat in all four prongs the same depth, and I'll be able to see this line either on the inside of the prong where I'm cutting, or I can see the line on the outside of the prong if the angle I'm holding the ring prevents me from seeing the line on the inside. I begin cutting the seat with a small heart burr right at the line that I drew. This burr is about 1.3 millimeters in diameter. This will be a guideline for the rest of the cutting. Don't cut this very deep, maybe a fourth of the way into the prongs. We'll then work from this line to cut our seat. Next, take a very small bud burr and cut a hole right in the center of the prong where the point of the stone is going to be. You want to be careful to not cut too deep because after cleaning up the prong and polishing, you do not want the hole to show through. For this reason, I don't use a drill bit or a ball burr because those are fairly aggressive in cutting a hole. The point of the bud burr will cut into the prong, but it's less aggressive and a lot easier to control the depth of cutting. I then place the bud burr in the hole and pull it out to the end of the prong widening the seat. It is important to use a bud burr here because the point of the bud burr will ride in the line that was cut by the heart burr and keep the cut straight and even. Next, I use a square needle file and cut right into the corners. I want to angle the tops of the prong from the top of the prong down to where the girdle of the stone will be. This metal will actually be out over the stone, and by filing this now will give us less cleanup to do after the stone is set. I then switch to a triangular file because it has a little wider flat surface and I finish the bevel cut out to the edges of the prongs. You want to be sure to file this on an angle. You don't want to remove any metal at the top of the seat because you want the metal out over the stone. You want this metal to be angled from the stone up to the top of the prong. Next, take a pair of needle nose pliers and bend out the tops of the V-prongs. We need to bend this out a little to have clearance to fit the stone and still have the metal left to go out over the stone to hold it in. Next, take the stone and test it in the seat to see how it fits. You always want to cut the seat a little bit and then test fit the stone and if necessary go back and cut some more rather than being too aggressive and cut too much metal at the beginning. The stone doesn't quite fit and so we need to cut a little deeper. By cutting like this holding the hand piece in your hand like you would a pencil and letting the burr right against your middle finger really helps to control the burr to keep it from walking around the prong. Then go back and take the bud burr and cut into the point and then pull out along the line you cut with the heart burr to widen it a little bit to make the seat for the girdle of the stone. We're using very small burrs here. This bud burr is about one millimeter in diameter.
We test fit the stone again to see if it fits into the mounting. And you can see it's almost going into the seat, but it's not quite going down. So I'll take the pliers and bend out a little bit more. It's also hitting on the keel line, so we'll need to remove some of the metal inside the V. These V tips are big for the size stone that we have, and so I'm trimming them down. This could have been done earlier, but I didn't realize when we began. And now as I'm fitting the stone, I don't like the look of how heavy they are. So I use a knife edge file to get in between the prongs and just file a little bit off of the sides of the prongs to make the V's a little bit smaller. The stone was hitting on the keel line, so now I need to go and cut down from the point of the stone. First, we take the bud burr in the point and cut straight down, cutting a line. And then we use the rounded part of the bud burr to open that line up to give plenty of clearance for the keel line going from the point of the stone down to the culet. Once this line is cut, cut into the point a little deeper to make sure that there is no metal touching the points of the stone. Then fit the stone in again to see if it will fit. Then begin pulling the prong back in place by using bent needle nose pliers. I place one jaw at the very bottom of the crown away from the stone and reach diagonally across to the other point and pull straight across. You don't want to squeeze from point to point because you could break the stone. Make sure one jaw is down at the bottom of the crown away from the stone and you will not damage it. This pulls the prong up and starts to bend them over. Then I take a pair of needle nose pliers and squeeze sideways. We're squeezing in on the sides of the diamond, not directly on the point, so we won't damage the stone. This brings the prongs back up nice and tight against the stone. We tipped them out earlier to get the stone in place because we undercut the seat and have a little metal overhanging the seat. Now this metal is out over the stone and holds it into place. Once we have the prongs up against the stone, I then take the pliers across the V and squeeze in on the tips of the V over the stone and that will lock the stone tight. Check now to make sure everything is straight and level. Then take the pliers and place them on the outside edge of the V above the girdle of the stone and squeeze the pliers together. The jaws of the pliers will burnish the metal down tight over the stone. A lot of jewelers will take a saw blade and cut down the point of the V-tip. I don't like to do that because it leaves two small pieces of metal on each side of the V-tip and it weakens the prong. Setting the stone this way keeps the full metal intact and it's a very strong durable prong rather than just having two weak tabs folded over each side of the point. By just using the sides of the chain nose pliers we can burnish the metal out over and tight onto the stone. Then use a needle file to just trim and even out the prongs and remove any plier marks off the sides of the prong. By going across the top we make sure all the prongs are the same height. When you file the sides be sure to file across two of the V-tips to ensure that the two prongs are on the same plane and it makes the setting look very nice and square. I then take just one stroke lightly across the point of the V to slightly round it off so that there's no sharp edge on the outside corners. Next take a high polished flat graver and go in on the bevel that we cut with the file earlier and clean it up, removing any file marks smoothing it out and removing any unevenness in the metal that was caused from folding it over the stone. Go around each of the four V-tips and cut both sides of the V to make them nice and smooth and highly polished. Then take a pumice wheel and go over the outside of the prongs lightly. You don't want to be too aggressive here because you can make a wavy surface with the round wheel. The files left a nice flat surface 
We just want to remove the file marks and get it ready for polishing. And then polish the mounting and your ring is ready to be delivered to your customer.